Bits of Geelong, our family caring for yours. Hi, it's Lisa Blackwell, the dog trainer at Bets of Geelong. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video on consent training to teach your dog to wear a muzzle. Um, it's so important that we teach our dogs to give consent to putting a muzzle on um, to keep them safe when they come into the clinic because often they're so stressed and so worried about the environment and what's going on through no fault of anyone's they feel that they have to lash out and use angry big feelings with their teeth. So it's all about keeping the dog safe, it's all about keeping you safe, and it's all about keeping the staff here at the clinic safe. Everyone's more relaxed because they know that no harm can happen, and you'll find that the puppy or the dog will learn to settle when being handled. It's just something they wear. It's just an extra accessory, like a collar or a leash. So you should be really proud on the extra effort you're making for the love of your dog. Remember, calm minds learn better. It's so important. There's no point in teaching a dog to do something when they're stressed or they're worried or they're anxious. So teaching dogs to give consent to wearing a muzzle is mealtime training is the ideal time. At home, where they feel safe, they feel secure, you're relaxed and calm, because remember, they'll pick up on your stress too. So what I'd like to suggest, I'm just gonna get one of my little props here. Um, if you've got a dog with a longer muzzle, uh -oh. <laughs> if you've got a dog with a longer muzzle, you can see I've got a cup, the plastic cup that's cut out. We're not putting the muzzle on just yet. We're teaching them how to put their head in. So if we hold the treat like this, like that, and then the dog goes, oh, there's a cookie, yum, 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 yum. And they have a little nibble of the cookie like that. And then they pull their head out, use your bridge word as they put their head in, yes, and treat. Or if you use good, use good as your bridge word. So what you're doing then, you might do that, I don't know, 10, 10 times over their meal time. It's fantastic. The puppy's learning to go, or dog's learning to put their head in, yum, 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 thanks so much. Do that for two weeks. Remember, it takes two weeks to change a behaviour, modify a behaviour, teach a behaviour so that it's reliable. Do this with no stress. Then you would introduce the muzzle. Now I suggest using a basket muzzle, not one of those nylon muzzles because the dog gets too hot around the muzzle area. And basket muzzles are much easier to give treats through as well. Make sure there's no sharp edges on the basket muzzle. So again, you would have the dog side on and putting their head into the muzzle like that, getting them used to putting their head into the basket. Once they're comfortable with that, you would then start working on putting the straps up. We don't want to reach into the dog like that to put the, put the, um, the straps on because that would be really confronting, um, especially if your body language is looming over the dog. If you've got a smaller dog, I would love for you to do, teach them to stand, get them comfortable standing, and then I would love for you to scoop them up. Put them on a table with a towel or a blanket or a bath mat or something like that so they've got a solid surface and then go through the muzzle training. Often when we pick our puppies up or our dogs up, we scoop them up like that, all of a sudden the ground's out from underneath them and they get a fright, they feel overwhelmed, they get big feelings and that's the start of the preloading stresses of being examined. So if you can get used to getting their head into something, then progress to the muzzle, that's the way to go. This is ideal for a dog that's um, got a longer muzzle. But if you've got a dog with a smaller muzzle, what you could do, I've cut this out already. So we've got a bit cut out here. I don't know if you can see that. Food goes in there, dog puts their head in there, nom, 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 nom. You could cut this bit out here as well and feed that way if you wanted to. Um, now, if you had a dog with a smaller, shorter muzzle, maybe like a, a pug or a bulldog, maybe a French bulldog, this is just a paper cup. As you can see, I'm just quite easily cutting it. Maybe not, I've got to the seam of it. There we go, cut that like that. So now I've got a shorter muzzle, and I can just pop it in like that, and the little dog will go nom, 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 nom. So small dog, big dog, 
All dogs, if they have big feelings, are either going to get so frightened they'll pull away or they'll stand up and, and um, have a crack. So it's really important that we keep them in that calm, neutral state. Um, we don't want them right shifting and getting angry. We don't want them left shifting and being so terrified that they shut down. Often the left shift in behaviour, they will actually have a bite as well. So it's because they're feeling so overwhelmed, big feelings, no one's listening to them, so they've got to, they've got to make their feelings known a bit more clearer. So have a play around with this. Um, I am available for one-on-one -on -one lessons here at the clinic by appointment. You can just give me a call at Lisa, sorry, an email I should say, lisa at vetsofgeelong.com.au to organise a private lesson with me. Um, or you can just give the clinic a call on 5243 0077. But I'm really proud of you for making the steps to teach your dog to give consent to wear a muzzle. You're amazing. Thank you. Bye.